find an answer to the question, we instinctively turn to books. The prominent manifestations of human mind which men leave behind for the posterity. They constitute a legacy that lends life to human civilization, stronger than the structures built by human hands, even stronger than the castles of stone which vanish with time. Wonders of mind are here to sustain and live for all times to come. They withstand the rigors of time and live. All else is to die and perish. On earth, mind was the only weapon with an unarmed creature called man. With it, he worked wonders, performed feats, conquered nature, and in a way, justified his place as God's vice chairman. Human mind is a marvel of nature with a limitless capacity to store and to create. It has proved to be the pivot round which the history of mankind revolves. The theories and concepts which change the course of history have been the brainchildren of some extraordinary minds. Read and remembered even after decades and centuries of their death, they have left some indelible marks in their respective fields. Though the fields of their study are different, yet they all can be brought under one umbrella. Poets, artists, scientists and philosophers, are they all intellectuals? If yes, then what makes them so? If no, then who is an intellectual? An intellectual is one who lives in the world of ideas and who wields the pen. It doesn't require much to convince Muslims that the very first revelation of God to man in the Quran begins with the pen. That I gave you the pen and I taught you what you knew not. So the role of the intellectual is A, to be in the realm of ideas, two, to wield the pen so that he can communicate, and three, that he learns to find out that what he does not know. We can define an intellectual in terms of the main attributes that he should possess. And I have identified three main attributes. Number one, he should have an ever alert and ever alive inquisitiveness so that he does not accept things on trust. He does not accept convictions on trust, but examines them in his personal terms. Voile used to say that when I see common men agreeing with me, I think something is wrong with my own mind. The second characteristic of a great intellectual is that he possesses comprehensiveness and balance. He is able to see all aspects of a particular problem. He doesn't therefore see life or things or whatever problem comes before him in terms of black and white, but looks at it in terms of the complexity of life, so that he is never bigoted. He is always open to experience. And this leads, to the, leads me to the third characteristic which an intellectual should possess, which is his capability of growth and evolution. He goes on growing. He goes on learning. He never closes his mind. Intellectual is one whose EQ is larger. By EQ I mean emotional quotient in which you will find individuality being predominantly influenced by the social needs, social links and social relatedness. Socrates stands out as a glaring example of an intellectual par excellence. His disciple Plato preserved his master's intellectual legacy through the Republic. But this father of political radicalism denounced democracy. Contributions accepted, but this great mind justified slavery on moral grounds. He considered all non-Greeks as barbarians and recommended the enslavement of Persians, thereby contradicting his own theory. Plato and Aristotle, 
both denounced women, both supported racism, can they still be called intellectuals? I would say yes, they were intellectuals. But if they thought in racial terms, if they denounced women, if they denounced slaves, it was because they belonged to a particular stage of human culture. Human culture has been evolving for centuries. They belong to a particular stage. And for that particular stage, they definitely were intellectuals. Plato and Aristotle were outstanding intellectuals and thinkers of their time. It does not matter at all that that was a slave-owning democracy. Because in the history of mankind, man has marched from primitive life, the Stone Age, via slavery, to feudalism, and finally to industrialism, which means capitalism and democracy, and finally socialism. This has been the march of man. So as intellectual, it is not to be judged because why slavery existed at one time. Because then slavery existed in the time of the Prophet also. We were asked to treat them well, but we were not to abolish it, because economically it was not possible to abolish it. In my opinion, both of them are to be taken as intellectuals. Precisely when we start qualifying people, characterizing people with certain norms, to which once they are referred, maybe then you may start with a doubt. But once you take their contribution, you'll find there is a universality as such. It is a global phenomenon to which these people are addressing. History has been shaped by some great minds who had the courage to swim against the tide. Copernicus, Bruno and Galileo challenged Ptolemy, whose word was a gospel to the clergy. Bruno was burnt alive and Galileo was forced to recant his theories. They defied and paid the price. Inquisitiveness is the hallmark of an intellectual. Had there not been a curious mind like Newton to witness an apple fall, modern physics may have been a distant dream. Scientists possess an unusual curiosity which helps unravel the mysteries of universe. Knowledge is power, but does knowledge alone make an intellectual? How far can shared experience play a role in nourishing the intellect of a man who by birth is neither lettered nor unlettered? An illiterate mechanic sometimes plays a teacher to an engineer of the same subject. A gardener sometimes excels in his knowledge about plants than a plant expert himself. What role does formal education play in bringing out the best from a human mind? We have scholars of high repute, but do their degrees alone bring them on the intellectual plane? We have to know the difference between a pure pedagogue and a genuine intellectual. Sharper in intelligence and faster in their power to understand the things, these apparently unschooled professionals can at times be far ahead of their learned counterparts. How far are we justified in calling them as unlettered intellectuals? Literacy does not merely mean that you, le you have learned to write A, B, C, D or you have learned to read. There can be people who possess knowledge, understanding of human life, even without being illiterate in the commonly believed terms that they know ABCD. They may not know ABCD. They may not have learned to read and write, and yet they can be intellectual in their own right. I don't believe in this kind of myth that there can be an illiterate intellectual. Of course, we can't uh, uh, major one's uh, intellectual achievements in terms of his erudition or in terms of the bulk of his um, product. But at the same time, uh, the term itself uh, is associated with uh, the book culture, the written culture, the text culture. Since uh, all the intellectuals have to be interdisciplinary in, this, uh, in the present uh, scenario, in the present world, so when 
uh, it is necessary to be interdisciplinary. He has to be very much educated, a knowledgeable person, having a little knowledge of all things. If we look at human history, some of the greatest revolutionaries have been those who were not literate in those terms in which we define literacy. I am not talking of people who, are, who receive direct intuition, like the Prophet of Islam. But if it is the role of the intellectual, it has got to be based on words, and words have to be learnt. I would not say illiterate intellectuals, I would say unlettered intellectuals. Intellectuals who are not properly formalized in literacy. But they can be intellectuals. Why? Because by now it has been proven that giftedness, intellectuality, is largely H mold. And once I talk about H mold, H mold means hereditary mold. So there is E mold kind of thing, there is hereditary kind of thing. So if it is if H mold is uh, dominant, then naturally you can't say precisely it is only the intellectual order would only flow out of educational institutions, universities, colleges, professional or otherwise. Honesty matters. Profundity has got to be coupled with probity to make one a complete intellectual. An incoherent concept of ideology without morality is going to hurl us in a vortex of moral obsolescence. What is needed is a confluence of intellect and morality. As Aristotle says that there are only two virtues. One is moral and another intellectual. So should we take morality as part of one's intellectual self? Morality is the heart of not only the intellectual but of politics too. But when it gets divorced and you become a greedy, mean, avaricious, accusative man as you find around, then morality is divorced, not only from politics but from culture. But it is the job of the intellectual to create an atmosphere for pursuing truth. And you can't pursue truth if you are based on a lie. An intellectual has to be committed to his society. It is a different question what kind of moral codes he follows. And in fact, I believe in a morality, in, in such ethics which is not taught uh, which is not a pedagogical uh, uh, enterprise, but which emerges with the growth of an individual. But here again, we will have to define morality. If morality means a commitment, a healthy commitment to life, yes, every intellectual has got to be moral. But if morality means commitment to a particular ideal, moral ideal, or to a particular set of moral values, so that that set of moral values leads to invalidating, not accepting the validity of other systems or other value systems or other systems of moral values, then I would say no. In that sense, the intellectual should, shall not have to be moral. He is moral because he is essentially committed to life and he wants to contribute in a healthy and wholesome manner to the enrichment of individual and collective life. Writers write and die. Poets leave behind the feats of their imagination. Artists get immortalized through their art. But the question remains, how significant are these contributions? What amount of good do their works do to the posterity? Scientists explore and invent. Theirs is a practical contribution which generations benefit from. A thing of beauty may not always be a joy forever, but a thing of use is a source of comfort in life. Many may appear to be intellectuals, many others stake their claim for the honor, but the question is, can we weigh the contribution of a genuine intellectual? Yes or no, both. Yes, because uh, intellectuals who happen to be creative at the same time, productive, you see, you can have an idea 
and very imaginative idea, very innovative idea, but then idea is idea aside. But once you put it down in form of a book, poetry, art, fine art, science, art, technology, whatever, then the product is before you. From the pro product, you can judge the intellectuality of a person behind that product as such. So sometimes we feel that going from product to process, from process to person. So therefore, you can, this is a kind of identity of a person, his product as such. When I say no, no, in the sense that there are intellectuals for whom you don't find any uh, manifest content is available, manifest products available through which you could judge. But at the same time, you will find that there have been people who at the turning points in history have entered into history and changed its direction. I believe that uh, an intellectual's achievement can be assessed through his practical commitment to the idea he believes in, uh, whatever his uh, opinion is about the problems of the world. He fires the mind of people by idea. And you don't require much persuasion to realize that today a Noam Chomsky in America who can who can question and challenge the entire establishment and power of America. But intellectual is one who challenges the establishment, challenges the powers that be and all authority and does not accept anything on second hand. All said and done, are we any nearer the answer to the question who is an intellectual? Definitions as ever are not easy to find. We can only point to the ingredients that compose an intellectual. Knowledge, balance, intelligence, wit, morality, and faith. Let's conclude on a Shakespearean note with a little change that the elements so mixed in him that nature will one day stand up and say to the world, this is an intellectual.